Hey everyone, so in today's Tech Diaries, we are going to review the Pixel 4, which is Google's latest smartphone competitor. The Pixel smartphone line is famous for its amazing cameras and photo quality, and the latest model is no different and continues to impress with its photography skills. But it also comes with a few other upgrades, facial recognition, additional colors, an emotion sensor that lets you gesture and interact with your phone. They're all great features, but I'd argue they don't justify the price tag for the average consumer. So to get into it all in more detail, in this review, I will be covering the main three W's. What is it? Why would you care? And who would buy this? So let's get right to it. The Pixel 4 comes in two sizes, the regular 5.7 display and the XL 6.3 display. You can also get them in three different colors, black, white, and orange. Now, if you're familiar with these flagship phones from Google, then you know they're a bit of a leader in the market when it comes to their cameras. And though some other competitors have caught up in that arena, the new Pixel 4 and 4 XL still come packing some new features that will catch your eye. The most prominent is the facial recognition software in the front-facing camera to help unlock your phone. Unlike most of its competitors, Google was still using a fingerprint reader to let users unlock their phones. Google might be late to the game with this tech, but the new feature is great, convenient, and faster than most Android phones. Uh, face unlock is just way more convenient. You literally just have to do this, and it's unlocked. It's that easy. So. Even if it were to be at this angle, let's put it lower. You know, you'd think my face is not gonna be recognized, but look, just watch. Ah, it's unlocked. Other than the facial recognition, the Pixel 4 also comes with a new motion sensor that offers an array of new features, like gesturing at the screen to stop an alarm, switching between songs, and even playing with Pokemon. So you can have Pikachu as your wallpaper all the time, and you could just do stuff like wave at him and he'll wave back. And then you could also have Eevee. And if you poke them or if you kind of pet them, they'll have like little heart emojis. It's cute. Like I said, um, useless, but super fun. Now let's talk about the cameras, which is what a lot of you considering this phone probably care about. The Pixel 4 has a new telephoto lens called Super Res Zoom that gives it a super smart image processing capable of going toe to toe with competitors such as Huawei. It also comes with an astrophotography mode, which lets you take two to three minute long exposures designed to capture the stars. It's an amazing feature with stunning results, but I really wanna know who will use it that often, if ever. As for their ultra-wide lens, Google has removed that option between 70 and 120 degree ultra-wide lenses seen on the Pixel 3a for a single fixed focused 90 degree lens in the Pixel 4. So if you're looking for an ultra-wide camera, the Pixel 4 is not the phone for you. But you can check out my review on the iPhone 11 lineup for that. If you're looking to upgrade your Pixel 3a and are on the fence, you should know the little things that both make and break the Pixel 4. Let's start with the bad. Google has removed free unlimited photo storage and you can't expand the physical memory on the phone. So depending on how many photos you store, apps you install, or music you download, 64 gigabytes won't be enough. Your option here would be to get an additional monthly Google One storage plan, which just means more money. Another thing I didn't like about the Pixel 4 that truly surprised me was a poor battery life. Google fitted the Pixel 4 with a smaller battery than both the Pixel 3a and the Pixel 3a XL. During my time with it, the Pixel 4 never lasted me a full day. So on busy days, I had to charge it again around 5 p.m. Oh, and if you're a fan of the Pixel Buds, I have bad news for you. There are no earbuds, no headphones whatsoever in the box. Usually smartphones come with at least the most basic of headphones, but that is not the case with the Pixel 4. And to make matters worse, it doesn't come with a dongle. Google doesn't seem to give you either. So that just means that you have to shell out more money when it comes to finding um, something to listen to music to. But it's not all bad. Here are some things that make the Pixel 4 better than the Pixel 3a. It now comes with a 90 hertz display, which basically means it has faster refresh rates that lead to vibrant colors and fast navigation through the UI. It truly is a fast, smooth operating phone. The cameras continue to be great, especially if you take a lot of photos at night. I'm about to test night sight on the Pixel 4 and I'm going into my restroom because it's the darkest place I could find in my apartment right now. So I'm gonna close the door and leave just one ray of light 
come through. And so now I'm gonna take a regular pixel picture on the pixel with the normal camera. And then I'm gonna go ahead and try night sight and take the same picture, but with a different setting. Look at that, that is the photo of that frame you're seeing right there. Same lighting, just different feature, but it looks like if I took that during the, the morning and there's just like a shade over it. Uh, and this is compared to the normal photo, which is just dark. The Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL start at $800 and $900 respectively. Both start with 64 gigabytes of storage. So they're in the higher range when it comes to pricing, but they're actually both more expensive than the regular iPhone 11. So if you're a diehard fan of the Pixel lineup and want to have the latest model, then you should look into investing in this phone. And the other selling point, which I can't stress enough, is if you want a phone with some of the best cameras, then get the Pixel 4. Other than that, I'd say you're better off buying the Pixel 3a, which is a really good phone with better battery life, cameras that still hold up one year later, and it's now discounted to $600. You could also look into other Android options like the Samsung Galaxy S10 or the OnePlus 7, which not only offer different capabilities and hardware, but also software like AI and camera tech. As for me, I wouldn't buy one. I'd stay with the Pixel 3a. I just don't think the few new upgrades are worth shelling out more money. So to quickly recap, here are the pros and the cons. The pros, it has great dual cameras on the back with amazing stabilization, a high refresh rate display, and the face unlock is faster than the fingerprint reader. The cons, well, it's pricey, the battery doesn't last long, there's no ultra wide camera, and it doesn't come with earbuds. It also doesn't come with expendable storage. So I'd say that if you have the money and want the new Pixel 4 because of the improved camera, the motion sensor, or simply because of the new orange and white colors, go for it. But if you're like me and don't think it's enough of an upgrade, then go for the Pixel 3a. The Pokemon even sleep. That is so cute because it's nighttime. They're asleep because it's nighttime. Ah, so cute.